If you have Thank ever you. seen a Dolomite movie, this band is in it, and they can only do this quote line. <laughs> right, yeah, okay, so they just are playing the same stanza over and over again <laughs> as though that's all the fucking rights they could afford. Yep. See, I, I wrote in my notes, see what I like about funk is you only need to write nine notes and then you just play them until the 70s are over. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because Eli tricked me. I'm your host, No Illusions. Unfortunately, Heath won't be able to join us this week because he's sitting in line waiting to vote, which is all the more impressive when you consider that we record these on Friday. But sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic. Well, honestly, I don't know when people are listening to this episode. I'm either fantastic or <laughs> awful. Yeah, I am nowhere in between. Well, yep. Okay. Yeah. There you go. That's fair. That's fair. Except for the patrons, <laughs> in which case you're just on the fucking edge, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sitting 724.4 miles to my northeast is the host of the Opening Arguments podcast and returning guest masochist Andrew Torres. Andrew, welcome back for the second week in a row, sir. Yeah, uh, thanks, Noah. I guess, I guess I'm what counts as diversity here at Dan Awful Movies. <laughs> but what I am sure will be a sensitive and thoughtful yeah. evaluation of this film. <laughs> You know, opening arguments has been a little bit too friendly lately. We need to make sure that that that's when they start expanding the court. We need to make sure you are definitely not on the list, Andrew. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this will get me that last strike. So. <laughs> oh, I've always wanted to do this. Tell us, Noah, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Petey Wheatstraw. It's the story of the cutthroat, murderous world of stand-up comedy <laughs> and the innocent victims that die and or have to fuck Satan's daughter in the crossfire. The age-old tale. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you missed the halcyon days of SNL sketches being turned into movies, but they were just way too classy for you, <laughs> way too fleshed out, you will love this movie. It is fair to say that Petey Wheatstraw does not rise to the level of the black exploitation genre. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true. This is Dolomite minus the trademark rights, right? And uh, the high production values yep. you've come yep. to associate with it. Apropos of nothing, you know what movie is three times longer than I remember it being <laughs> the last time I drunkenly watched it in college? <clears throat> Yeah, the one thing I love about black exploitation movies is that the production quality is always so bad. Bad lighting, bad makeup, bad costuming, bad writing, bad directing, and the music is always fucking stellar. I have had the Petey oh. Wheatstraw theme in my fucking head for four <laughs> days now. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, uh, I'll take best worst. Uh, hey, Maybe I shouldn't have joked. That was a joke about how great <laughs> next week's guest was going to get it on last week's episode. <laughs> <sighs> you live, you learn. Yep, there you go. I, I spent the whole movie going, I bet Andrew remembers it being better than this. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct, sir. All right, speaking of which, I'm going to go with best worst poop joke. Ooh, now look, yeah. I cut my Ooh. teeth on poop jokes, right? Like uh, one of my proudest moments still is episode two of The Scathing Atheist, where I believe we crammed something like 47 poop jokes into an eight minute skit or something like that. I'm proud of that stuff. But this is not just the worst poop jokes that I've ever seen. These are the best worst poop jokes. A fucking <laughs> creator of poop jokes can look at these poop jokes and go, all right, that's some lowbrow shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to go with best worst tonal shift. Uh, now I don't, don't really want to spoil it, but let's just say that this film takes a very, very strange turn. <laughs> It's, it's not all that unusual to ride that line between comedy and tragedy, but it's real unusual to just divert and then come back so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Get off and get gas at tragedy and then get right back on the highway to comedy. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. this film tries to do. 
that. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're about to chase this plot all over the fucking map, so we're going to need a minute to stretch our quads, but we'll be back in a flash with the random consecutive events that are PD Wheatstraw. And again, I just want to emphasize my client is very sorry and will bring the monkey back to the zoo today. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your understanding. I appreciate it. Hey, Andrew. What you up to? Oh, just uh, cleaning up after Eli again. It is murder on my cell phone bill. Murder bill with a cell phone? Got it. No, uh, uh, there's another one. Well, why don't you just try Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Well asked, Andrew. They were the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, and now Mint Mobile is introducing their unlimited plan for just 30 bucks a month. Wait, unlimited data for just 30 bucks a month? That's way cheaper than what I'm paying now. You bet it is. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You get to use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Wow, that sounds great. Where do I sign up? Well, to get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 30 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your unlimited wireless bill to 30 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right, Noah, I'm in. Andrew, Andrew, Bill Bark counts as a bill, right? Even though it's William. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Technically he does. Nice. You're not going to stop him before he goes? No, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> that one's for you, Mint Mobile. <laughs> Mr. Dolomite, come on in. Thank you. It is I, temporarily successful comedian Dolomite. Right, right. Now, you said you were interested in making another movie. That is correct. A kung fu comedy, if you will. Oh, wow. I, I had no idea that you knew kung fu. I do not. And as will become apparent in this film, I do not know comedy either. Okay. All right. No problem. So what are we thinking for a plot? Well, it will mostly be about two fat motherfuckers who owe me money from a comedy gig I did in St. Louis and my quest for revenge against them. Uh, okay. But when that plot is over, I will fight the devil so that I do not have to fuck an ugly woman. Well, okay, well, so usually plots just, you know, it's like one plot per movie. Oh, I assure you that there will not be one plot in this movie, let alone multiples. Oh, OK. Well, well, Mr. Dolomite, that that sounds terrible. Uh, it's like really bad. But, you know, it's the 70s. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, fund this movie. I'm glad to hear it. Unfortunately, that was a rather long sentence, so the period during which people found me funny is over. Oh, I'm I'm very sorry to hear that. Are you? No. No. And we're back, and we're going to open up with me learning just how much cooler Xenon is than I was given a credit for. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's not often that a logo tells you how much fun you're about to have watching a movie, but Xenon Pictures is that logo. Yes, sir. So we're going to open up on flames and then we're going to open up on our hero, Dolomite, but P.D. Wheatstraw in this film, the devil's son-in-law who is here to do slam poetry for us. <laughs> it's, it's like the opening monologue is all the guys who ask for money got together on the subway to write this out. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is pretty genius, though. The, the opening line is I can sit on a tombstone and produce baby ghosts. Which, by the way, is foreshadowing for eight seconds from now that no one involved with this movie knows how babies are made. No, they do not. Yeah. <laughs> Although I will say that's a that's a fuck up in, in the writing, though. You don't tell people you're going to do that and then not show it to them. OK, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. All right. Also, the end of this slam poem was the point of the film in which I had to turn on the closed captioning. Yeah, oh. yeah. early and often. <laughs> So this movie is available for free on Daily Motion, and whoever was in charge of the closed captioning over at Daily Motion had a rough week. They were doing <laughs> this one. All right, so yeah, so he rhymes this into a doodly do about the day he was born during a hurricane in Miami, and we open on this hilariously pregnant woman giving birth. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want you to picture a woman trying to hide a five foot yoga ball under <laughs> yes, a blanket. Right. Like her belly is spherical. <laughs> yep. 
And the family is preparing for the arrival of their child by bouncing off the walls like Roger Rabbit just did his first key bump. It is <laughs> strange. And so, okay, so yeah, then the doctor comes in to assist in the birth. Did not expect this black family in the middle of Miami to know an Asian Orthodox rabbi, <laughs> but he is their doctor. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you had asked Mel Brooks in 1976 to play a character named Jewy McJewerson, he'd look over at the doctor and Petey Wheatstraw and go, eh, that's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's also, and I don't know that this is related to the movie, wearing a plastic vest over a regular vest for his costume. <laughs> Because he's funny. Yeah, so, and then we get this amazing line. The doctor says, oh my God, she's going to have an elephant because she's got such a big, giant, r ridiculous stomach. And the husband says, you trying to say my wife screwed an elephant? And I just wrote in my notes, I'm in, movie. <laughs> <laughs> you had me in hello. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they do some slapstick here. The, the, the baby starts to, uh, uh, she first gives birth to a watermelon, apparently, before Petey Wheat Straw. Un. Comfortable for me. <laughs> yeah. So, but then we finally get the baby who is an 11 year old in a diaper. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and I guess that's supposed to be the comedy bit, right? That the baby comes out 11 years old and kicking ass. But actually, it's just a very, very angry child actor who's trying to say his lines as quickly as he can to end the scene. <laughs> It, in fairness, the movie explicitly notes that his fraternal twin brother is a watermelon. Yeah, so be pretty angry too. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, tough but fair. Yeah. All right, so then we get to the credits, and uh, we get so there's like TV level credits, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except that you don't often see Leroy and Skillet in oh, your TV. Oh God, the credits credit. are so. Good. But you should. You fucking <laughs> yeah. should. Also. Pretty sure they just told these child actors to fight and filmed it. This does not, this does yeah. not strike me as a choreographed uh, scene. No, yeah, th that's certainly what it appears to be. They're <laughs> like, yeah, I'll try not to hit in the face too much, but yeah, other than that, <laughs> eh, go ahead and hit in the face. <laughs> and yeah, like no, too much, you know, not too much. Yeah, as long as he wakes up within forty eight hours, you're good. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. Uh, so basically, so we watched this for a very, very long time. Petey Weistrak gets his ass kicked, but he's being watched by like. Old black Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. And and look, like, since we're going to dump on this movie, and rightfully so, I want to point out that these credits right here recreate literally all of the the plot of the Karate Kid movie in one 85-second montage. Yep. And with the same level of racial sensitivity. as. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, because we then cut to a, a quick karate learning montage. Um, oh, by the way, so in addition to Leroy and Skillet, we also get also starring Wild Man Steve in the credits at this point. I, so fun fact, I went to IMDb to look up Wild Man Steve's credits. Awesome. And they are as follows. His first film, Ain't That Just Like a Honky, <laughs> followed by The Guy from Harlem, followed by this movie. And then for his final cinematic masterpiece, the six thousand dollar N word. Oh wow! Amazing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I will be back when Gam does that. Movie. <laughs> all right. Well, now you've spoiled the end of the episode where I reveal next week's movie. Andrew, oh, well, Great. All right. damn it! I thought I learned my lesson. About this <laughs> all right. So yeah. So we get our karate training montage, which includes, by the way, his sensei trying to figure out what to do with nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> this this guy does nunchucks for. I would say four seconds very clearly hits himself and then stops and bouts about it. Yeah, but the kid knew what he was doing, right? The kid was working him. He was going yeah. all fruit ninja and shit. <laughs> all right. But then he finishes his Jedi training, right? <laughs> Apparently he learned all of Kung Fu that summer. Oh. <laughs> and he's like, all right, you know, all Kung Fu now to which the child replies. Ah, uh, but I really want to be a comedian. <laughs> yeah. What? Can, can, <laughs> hey, Sensei, can I be a comedian ninja? And he's like, I guess. I mean, if you want to be a... Sure. Okay. Comedian ninja. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, and his response is, yeah, you could be a comedian. The way to do that is to be kind to people and not take shit from anyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, and right here is where we need the Morgan Freeman voiceover. 
Rudy Ray Moore would not, in fact, be kind to anyone. Yeah, no, no shit. Yeah. So, yeah, so he takes the fucking vow of the comedian ninja or whatever, and we cut back to the future. Now he's an adult and he's comedian-ing. Now, that was a much simpler thing back in the 70s. Apparently, your entire <laughs> comedy routine could be your butt is much larger than most people's. <laughs> and it could be a dialogue shouted back and forth between you and one audience member. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was like just listening to somebody argue with their waitress at the Waffle House. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, the actual line is, shut your ugly, old-time, ancient ass up. Which, um, yeah, like, you know, when when you're, you know, it's sort of late at night and you're down the YouTube rabbit hole and you wind up on that montage of Jimmy Carr destroying hecklers, yes. you know, and it's reasonably funny. This is the exact opposite of that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right. Yeah. He's not an insult comedian. He's just an insulting person. person. <laughs> yeah, he's, right. he's just <laughs> unkind. And, and this is further fleshed out when... Another man in the audience stands up and is like, hey, don't you talk to my woman like that. To which Dolomite responds, fuck you. I will kill you. <laughs> yeah, yes, much. He does. Yeah. yeah. And then he goes, well, that's my set. If you didn't like it, go fuck yourself and walks <laughs> off stage. Yeah. He made quite a big deal out of like, I know you guys weren't entertained, but I don't give a shit. So and then also, by the way, so we get one last credit that I have to point out directed by Cliff Rockmore. Libra. <laughs> <laughs> me, me too cliff me too <laughs> <laughs> to point that one out All long right. walks on the beach i get it so, so then we meet leroy and skillet now <laughs> i gotta be honest with you like i i kind of want to go look up some of their old stuff because this is a comedy duo and like the two of these guys are actually pretty fucking funny together they're just given nothing worth doing in this in this fucking movie. Well, that's what's so fascinating, right? Because it's obvious that they are a comedy duo, but that whoever cast them was like, and you will do none of your fucking bits. Do you hear me? <laughs> none. You will do one joke in act three and you will not be funnier than Dolomite. God damn it. Not be funnier. <laughs> so their entire appearance in the movie is a setup to their comedy act, which they never do. It's just like, hey, Leroy. <laughs> hey, Skillet. How's that mother of yours? She's fine. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so we meet them, and when we meet them, they're getting a very large loan for their new comedy show from I shit you not, Mr. White. <laughs> yeah, Mr. White, who looks like the principal in every John Hughes movie, but is <laughs> is played as like this intimidating villain, which makes no sense yeah. because we're going to find out like in 86 seconds that Leroy and Skillet have an entire lounge act full of hired goons. Right? <laughs> they do. <laughs> right. They do. Uh, right. And, and towards the end of the scene, Mr. White is like, if I lose money, you'll be sorry. And the camera pans around to like, Three Microsoft employees he brought with him? <laughs> In turtlenecks? <laughs> Buy him out, boys. <laughs> yeah, but we meet, we meet the bad white folks. <laughs> so meanwhile, we, we have uh, Petey Wheatstraw. He's, he's showing up to this town, right? He's flying out of wherever it was. He was just doing that comedy show about how big that woman's ass was and flying to a new place with new large asses. So we see he like he shows up, he gets picked up and he uh, taken to a radio interview so that like, you know, he can promote his comedy show. And of course, so that Leroy and Skillet can hear that the famous PD Wheat Straw is in town to compete with their show. And I love this radio interview. It's the the DJ's like, so what's the show going to be like? To which PD Wheat Straw's answer is you better fucking come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be clear on the plot here, right? This KXP all exposition radio all the time <laughs> is about to explain to Leroy and Skillet that the day after their show's opening night, Petey Wheatstraw is going to put on his show. So dot, dot, dot. Like there can't, there's not room. You know, this town ain't the, you know, big enough for yeah. two separate comedy acts. <laughs> yeah. That's the plot. On different nights. Yeah. Well, and that's that is what truly baffled me is the choice to make it the day after their opening night. Right. And also, spoiler for later in the movie, there is never a Petey Wheatstraw opening night comedy act. By the no. Way. Oh, no, no, there is not. <laughs> Absolutely not. We will never make it that far into the film. But Skillet hears all about that. And he has to run in and warn Leroy that shit's about to hit the fan. Oh, there's this. 
insane moment where Skillet uses the opportunity to funny walk across the set <laughs> oh before he God. can deliver this information. <laughs> would you say moment? Would you say it was a single moment? Yeah, I, it's it's a single <laughs> episode of Everybody's Love Raymond is what it is. It's, <laughs> it, it, and he, uh. he also changes the bit halfway through he's like i'm walking like i gotta pee no that's not the joke what's the joke okay something's up my <laughs> yeah. butt no no i have one leg shorter than the other <laughs> i had to delete all of my notes here about the appearance of leroy and skillet because i know what happens to lawyers who wind up uh, on the splc's list of hate groups <laughs> yeah they get nominated to the supreme court exactly uh, <laughs> so, uh, he wouldn't want all that controversy okay so meanwhile <laughs> So Petey is chatting it up with the guy who owns the club that he's going to play at. This scene doesn't serve a hell of a lot of purpose other than to introduce us to the poop joke theme of the film. Oh, man. This guy comes over and he's like, hello, I am the owner of this club. Stand up comedy about poop in three Two, one. <laughs> well, he actually like kind of does the like looking down at Dolomite and is like, uh, uh, can you give me the setup line? And then <laughs> Rudy Ray Moore obligingly says, and I quote, your dressing room looks like a shit house." Speaking of shit houses, Yeah, right. No, that's exactly how they get into it. I, I, I know this is so weird to say, but. Today's poop jokes are way more sophisticated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've made progress. <laughs> Two things are zooming along, the COVID vaccine and today's poop joke. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, we you know, I don't want to I don't want to like brag or anything, but we've contributed to that. I'm just <laughs> All right. So they they leave the club though, and damn if there aren't a bunch of people out there stripping Petey Wheatstraw's car, right? So, cuz we need a chance for him to kick some ass. Right before he goes to kick their ass, he, he yells about how black people deserve poverty. It's a very weird right wing moment in the middle of this kung fu comedy. <laughs> He's like, oh, and this is why black people are always living in ghettos. And you're like, whoa, Petey Wheatstraw. I keep think it, there's more to it. Than- <laughs> keep it apolitical, buddy. Just go, <laughs> go kung fu, those guys. <laughs> Well, yeah, and we can't decide what genre we're in, right? Because this is about to be a kung fu fight, but they're Benny Hill running around, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. 100% my note here is Benny Hill on 125th Street. Yep. yep. Yeah, yep. Even, even to the point where they accidentally pick up a hot chick with their, like, I wrote car couch, but, you know, yep. their, their bench <laughs> seating. <laughs> to be fair, she did go to the Prometheus school of running away yeah. from stuff. So. <laughs> right, right. Get out of the way. They also destroy, like, a bunch of eggs, mm-hmm. but they, they can't get the comedy moment right because <laughs> no. what happens is there's two guys carrying like a small pallet of eggs and when someone gets within 44 feet of them, they rocket all the eggs yes. into the air. <laughs> so I, the saddest part on this was I was positive watching this again that all the eggs were going to land back down you know they were going to do that film the scene in reverse trick Mm -hmm. and all the eggs were going to land perfectly uh, undisturbed and then get broken later right like that's how you pull off that comedy bit but no they start cracking in midair (laughs) and and Rudy Ray Moore was like I am not buying more eggs for this movie (laughs) we are are using this scene as is one take Broken egg comedy has come a long way as well. But yeah. So, but eventually Petey Wheatstraw catches up with uh, the bad guys and he starts rhyming them into submission. But th- that's not quite enough, right? His slam poetry isn't quite enough. So it's time for pants way too tight karate. <laughs> oh, my notes, word for word, are oh, sweet God, they forgot to learn kung fu for their kung fu movie. <laughs> so they're just fighting. <laughs> And they didn't choreograph, or at least oh, if they no. did, you can't tell. <laughs> so. No. The, I think this was, remember to let me win, was as far as the choreography got. Yep. <laughs> also, quick note here, on my second watch through of this movie, I realized that one of the robbers is dressed as the Scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I did not notice that. <laughs> yeah, I do not know why. It's like I the, just needed someone besides me to know it. <laughs> just do, like the ape walking through the basketball passes or something. Exactly, that one yeah. just got right by me. Bit of foreshadowing for the ending, I think. Oh, there you <laughs> Okay. All right. 
So yeah, so but it, the assembled crowd is very impressed with Petey Wheatstraw's ass kicking skills. So he orders all the guys to put his car back together. Can they do that? I feel like they'd have a better profession than car <laughs> taking apart. <laughs> yeah, right. <they> could. <laughs> but the key is that he teaches them a very Susian lesson, right? The one <laughs> car, two car, red car, blue car thing, and 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 then we're done with that scene. Meanwhile, okay, so when we were at the club, we met two characters named Larry and Ted. Now, Larry is like a 10, 12-year-old kid. Ted is his older brother, and they're working on some level with Petey Wheatstraw putting up promotional flyers and posters for his big comedy show, right? Yeah. So we cut to them. They put up a poster, and then apparently Leroy and Skillet, like most comedy duos, has a couple of henchmen, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's it. like me and Eli, we have Heath. <laughs> yep. <laughs> one specific one. Yeah. yeah but, but he's but taking any, care of business for us right now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, but at any rate, so so they come across these posters and they're like, fuck, we gotta call the boss. You know, this is big news. So they call uh Leroy and Skillet, they're like, Hey guys, bad news. Not only is he having a comedy show, but he's telling other people about it. <laughs> right. To which Leroy and Skillet reply, Do you do you want to try the plan we discussed earlier in the movie about asking him? Well, we no? just ask him nicely. Okay. Nah, no, nah, let's make sure we wave some guns around first. <laughs> All right. So we, we wrap that scene and then we, we very slowly pan up a mostly naked woman, right? Oh, yeah. We got to get to the exploitation portion of the film too. This is Nell. Now Nell is, comedically desperate to fuck Petey Wheatstraw, right? As you, as you are. Yeah. The idea that this man is desired by any, let alone multiple women, is the most far-fetched part of the movie. And this movie contains the literal devil. <laughs> <laughs> it contains possibly my favorite devil in the history of film. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. The, the devil's great. Yeah. By the way, Petey's response to her come on is, ah, eh, why not? It's probably not as terrible to fuck you as I think it is. And I just wrote in my notes, <laughs> the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies. So <laughs> try, try it out as PD Wheatstraw, right? Because his exact line is, eh, let's give it a whirl. It may not be as bad as I think it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm totally trying that line. 100% what's said. Oh. <laughs> so, but, but right before they fuck, the phone rings. And she she answers it, and wouldn't you know it, it's for Petey. Now, somehow, Petey could tell by the ring that it was Leroy. <laughs> and so he just picks up the phone, and he's like, Leroy, you need to go fuck yourself. <laughs> so, it, like, we introduce in this moment that apparently Leroy and Skillet, like, I guess, owe Petey Wheatstraw money for some outstanding comedian debt or something. It's... Baffling, And you can tell that the movie is convinced this is comedy, right? And I was trying to discover it like one of the fucking puzzles at the end of the Da Vinci Code. I was just like, okay, maybe it's because he's saying fuck. Is it that he's saying fuck you? I t <laughs> he says at one point, he's like, because they're asking him to postpone his show so as not to coincide with theirs. And he says, and I quote, I wouldn't postpone my show if you needed ice water in hell. What does that mean? No. No. <laughs> it, it, it's like Dolomite found like a book of phrases and put them in a blender and then gently sprinkled them over his script. I, I think that's probably pretty close to it. But yeah, but so, but he tells Nell, he's like, nope, sorry, we can't finish that fuck scene we were going to do. I have to go <laughs> kick some ass, take some names. I have a comedy feud to fulfill. Well, make a comedy <laughs> yes, feud. <exactly. laughs> All right. So now Leroy and Skillen have asked their heavies to check in every hour on the hour. They, they want them to follow Ted and Larry around as they put up the posters and call them every hour and let them know what's going on. Keep it in mind that there weren't cell phones back then. <laughs> they had to go find a goddamn payphone every to every hour. This was the moment in which I became very concerned about the economics of this movie's plot. Right? right? Because <laughs> they've borrowed $100,000 from Mr. White, Leroy and Skillet have. Mm -hmm. right? They have an entourage, which consists of the band Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> yep. And they are checking. They're on duty 24 hours a day and are checking in every... And I'm like... 
that hundred grand is not going as far as you think. Yeah, even right? in 1977. <laughs> yeah. But he calls him up and he's like, yeah, man, they're still putting up posters. And so Leroy's like, all right, I'm going to need you to whip the shit out of his poster guy. <laughs> right. So, but first we have to have a quick, we have to humanize Ted and Larry's relationship, big brother, little brother. So Larry's telling big brother about how he wants to be a basketball star when he grows up. And Ted's telling Larry about how he better not skip, keep skipping school. Like mom said, he's been doing right. Like all we just get a pile of this shit all at once. Uh, yeah. Li li little Larry is 30 seconds away from singing the, I like being alive song. Yep. Right? Like, <laughs> and, and I expect the movie to close caption over it. Like this is definitely not foreshadowing in any way whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so little Larry agrees that he won't skip any more school. And just then the henchmen show up. And during the altercation, shoot Larry in the fucking heart. <laughs> what an incredibly dark turn for Petey Wheatstraw, post colonic, the devil's son in law to take. Then a yeah. fucking 11 year old gets shot and killed in the front lawn at this point in the film. Yeah. Way darker than I was prepared to go with my jokes, y'all. And not comedically. No. We should point out. It's, oh, no. He's not like, <laughs> ouchie, ouchie, I got squouchied. The entire movie grinds to a halt as this child coughs up blood and promises not to skip school no more with his <laughs> dying words. <laughs> That's exactly how it goes. The mother's out there screaming and crying like it's a fucking Oscar clip or something. <laughs> the ambulance shows up way too quick for a black neighborhood. Like, come on, be realistic, guys. But the ambulance shows up to take him away and everybody's screaming and crying and renting their clothing. And I, yeah, it was <laughs> it was a very weird turn in the middle of the kung fu comedy movie about the devil. <laughs> Andrew and Noah, I have questions. You are both 45 years old. Ish. Were ambulances big vans with sirens? <laughs> and what year did that stop? And did ambulances have zebra print floors? Because okay, yes, everything had film. zebra print everything in the 1970s. <laughs> Eli. That's uh, everything was zebra print until I was at, li at least like six. Okay. <laughs> I thought if you were going to ask about like weirdly anachronistic moments, um, because I don't know the answer to this question, that this movie posits in 1977 that after a shooting, the black family would call the cops, mm. which struck me as odd. Did not strike me as odd that the cops do not, in fact, ever show up. <laughs> That's no, they do true. Not. They don't, do they? No. <laughs> the ambulance did, but there was never a cop. <laughs> All right. Well, I tell you what, I need to shift to like, dead kid jokes apparently so I need a minute to recalibrate but we're going to be back soon with even more Petey Wheatstraw gentlemen come in dibs on the chair oh, okay Noah are you, are you not going to race me for the chair like Heath does no dude there are two chairs oh, oh okay wow well I, I gotta say I broke it anyway uh, sorry about that Andrew it's fine. By now, I, I buy them by the pallet. So, um, all right, gentlemen, how can I help today? Ah, uh, I would like to sue Noah. It's true. He does. Uh, for what? He listens to stuff too loud. I can't hear my podcast. Podcast. You listen to one show over and over again. One episode. It is called The Adventure Zone, and Taco the Wizard loves me more than you ever will, No Illusions. N nobody is disputing that, Eli. Uh, all right. It, Eli... Why don't you just buy a pair of Raycons? Oh, I tried, Andrew. Went down to the gun store and everything, and they were all, Rayguns don't exist. Those are from sci-fi. But I knew they had them in the back, so I uh, no, hid. No, 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 Eli. Raycons. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbud on the market, and they sound just as amazing as the other top audio brands you know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet, with Six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. So I don't have to sue Noah? C correct. You don't have to sue Noah. Plus, Raycon's wireless earbuds are so comfortable, they're, they're perfect for conference calls or binging podcasts. And that's right in the copy. See? Who's the weirdo now? It's, it's still you. Yeah, still very much you. 
But yes, now is the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash gam. That's buyraycon.com slash gam for 15% off of Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash gam. Thanks, Andrew. Case closed. Yeah, that, that's, that's not how that works. Sustained. <laughs> hey, hey, Eli. Yeah? I, I love you more than Taco the Wizard loves you. Aww. Aww. Uh, Mr. Dolomite? Hello there. Are you the writer they sent over to help me with my kung fu comedy? Yeah, they, they said that if I didn't come help you write something, then most of the movie would just be you yelling rhymes at a fire barrel. Fire barrel, that is correct. Okay, uh, so the studio has already briefed me on the plot that you want, and um, that's got Leroy and Skillet. Um, anything you want to add to that? Yes, I would like a child to be killed in a gangland shooting. <sighs> you you, you want to put the death of a child in your kung fu comedy. Yes. I would also like him to be shot by a Nazi. A Nazi who turns out to be his father. Uh, wow. A, a, a Nazi. Mm -hmm. But as he shoots his son and the puppy he is holding, I would like a flashback to his days working the camps at Buchenwald. I, you want to depict a concentration camp in the middle of shooting a child. And, uh, did you just add a puppy? I did add a puppy, yes. Mr. Dolomite, with all due respect, isn't all this dark stuff going to ruin the comedy? Tell me, my friend, have you read the script for this movie? <laughs> y yes. Is it currently funnier than a Holocaust flashback while shooting a puppy? You know what? Fair point. You got me there. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go put that stuff in the movie. Thank you. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on Little Larry's funeral. That's right. Going all the way with dead kid in this one. Yeah, and I wrote in my notes that I feel like stripes were an odd choice for Petey Wheatstraw to wear, but that was until I saw his brother is wearing powder blue to the funeral. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> quite an interesting palette there. But I, I also loved, so we have singing lady at the front of the funeral procession, and I wondered if she was like, like a singing lady at the funeral, like guitar guy at the party. Like, was she asked <laughs> yeah. to do that? Or was she just not stop and it's a funeral so nobody has the heart to say, hey, man, you're... <laughs> anyway, yeah. But <laughs> so they're walking out of the uh, the funeral and the two henchmen, Leroy and Skillet's henchmen, show up with machine guns. <laughs> Look, I'm not denying that I am a terrible person, but like... I have to admit, the first time I saw Maurice White pull up and machine gun down a funeral procession, <laughs> I legitimately <laughs> laughed my ass off. I'm <laughs> this is why you never book conflicting comedy gigs, people. 90% of the violence in Chicago is over conflicting comedy gigs. People don't know. Yeah, people no, don't know. <laughs> uh. so, well, I wrote my notes like, well, damn, now getting all upset over the death of one 10 year old seems kind of silly. But. <laughs> but but yes, like just 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 to be clear, we are one third of the way through the movie and they have just killed the protagonist, Petey Wheatstraw. Yes. It, along with all the other characters. Yeah. <laughs> so then, well, except for the bad guys. So then a crazy stylish older gentleman comes walking through the big pile of dead bodies on the front steps of this church. This is Lucifer. And I love, I want to go back and watch everything this actor has ever done in his goddamn career. I had so much fun every time he was on the screen. <laughs> he shows up like he was supposed to be an extra in the funeral scene. And he wants to know if he can still have crafty. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he's Lucifer. He gives him his business card, which is weird that Satan needs a business card. I was just picturing someone showing up in hell and he's like, welcome to hell. And they're like, well, who are you? Oh, see, this is <laughs> Vistaprint. So he says, Petey, what I want from you is a son. And I, I wrote my notes. Am I going to be the top or the bottom? Because that changes things. Here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, but Satan wants Petey to fuck his daughter. That's not how sons work. But OK, <laughs> Satan wants Petey to fuck his daughter and give her a son so that Satan will have a grandson, I guess. Yeah. And so that the post colonical makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And he's not making a super persuasive argument. So he pulls out his crystal ball inside of which 
is a swoosh, and inside that swoosh are the guys ta- that shot him. Yeah, that, well, that's uh, Leroy and Skillet learning that Petey is no more, right? <laughs> so basically, Satan's like, so do you, you can you can stay alive if you marry uh, and and fuck my daughter. And he's like, mm, I don't know about staying alive. And he's like, well, if you stayed alive, you could get revenge on these motherfuckers. And he's like, okay, I'm in. Oh, <laughs> so as I'm watching the scene, I was waiting for the classic Satan only grants monkey paw wishes, right? Like, mm-hmm. like you know, I think he wants to make some kind of deal with the devil with you, right? Like, But no, the devil is literally the only character that's honest in this entire movie, right? Wow, he is. He's so much more moral than our protagonist. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Constantly throughout the movie, when he quote unquote crosses the devil, the devil will be like, well, PD, I'm not going to lie. I'm disappointed at your yeah. behavior. Yep. I'll give you one more I'm try. Prince of yeah. Darkness. <laughs> yeah. So, so Dolomite's like, all right. Well, you know what? I'll fu- wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if, how ugly is your daughter. Yeah. And again, the devil's totally honest. He's like, yeah, she's real ugly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. He shows her a picture. We don't see her, but you know, we we see his reaction, and he's about to turn Satan down, and then he's like. He remembers his sensei telling him something about wisdom. And then he's like, oh, right. No, that would be stupid for me to just be dead and in hell. Is is that what that wisdom, wisdom, wisdom <laughs> VO supposed to be? Like, I've watched this movie three times now, and I thought they just left an extra mic'd up while the scene was going. Like, it, was, <laughs> it was crazy bonkers. So, yeah, but that's how it all goes down. Then we come back to the funeral and instead of like having everybody just wake up from being shot and going like, wow, that was weird. We actually run all of it in reverse, <laughs> but they still remember being shot. They do. Yeah. It makes no goddamn sense. Anyway, we, they they regular funeral at it and everybody's like, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Did we just get shot and then unshot? Does everybody else feel like we got shot and killed and then we're not <laughs> dead now? Well, and also the movie will never address this, but I'm like, um, you know, the, as long as the devil's doing the, like, Superman flying around the earth backwards, uh, you know, rewinding mm. time thing, like, he could have gone back one more scene and unkilled little Larry. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right. No one gives a shit about him. <laughs> like, yeah, he's just dead. And wow. little Larry's older brother actually brings this up. He's like, hey, because afterwards they're all talking about the deal with the devil. And he's like, hey. How come you didn't ask for my brother to be? And he's like, revenge. I must have my revenge on <laughs> Skillet and Leroy. Yeah, right. So, yeah. So Larry's big brother will not rest until he settles with Scarface Willie. That's apparently the name of the henchman that has the big scar on his face. That's (laughs) Scarface Willie. So we cut to Scarface Willie. He's out for a night on the town when, damn it, if Larry's big brother doesn't spot him. (laughs) And he's like, hello, today I am here to be beaten up by you. Please follow me into this obvious trap. And they're all like, yeah, let's run into the obvious yeah, trap. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so they start all fighting one at a time. The, the, it's, a five, it's not a five on one. It's a one on one and then one and then one and then <laughs> one and then one. But he is getting beat, right? But that's when Petey shows up. And when Petey shows up, they all react like he's a ghost. But mm-hmm. one, everyone at that funeral got unshot. And two... He is not a ghost. Right. Nope. Nope. He's just like, you know, if you'd shot him and he just hadn't died, this is how it would go too, right? <laughs> but Scarface Willie is freaked the fuck out. And apparently the, the close captioning failed me. Either that or what Petey Wheatstraw really said was, tell your boss I'm still alive and I'm mad as a horny little bumblebee. It's <laughs> the closest I got. That's what the close captioning I watched it twice. That is the closest I got. Uh, I got I got nothing. <laughs> All right. So but then Scarface Willie is so frightened that he shits himself backwards. He yes. shits the front of his pants. <laughs> I it, it, I just I, I I have to say this in this kung fu stand-up supernatural comedy that features killing everyone at a funeral. This is the one moment that we all have a huh in our notes. But, but yeah, one hundred percent. You see, it's the classic like guy peeing himself on the video, but Brian the Foley guy is there pressing the wet shark button over and over again. <laughs> yes. It's it's crazy, and it's so long, listener. We will never communicate to you how long this wet shard sound effect goes on. They are positive they are going to get 
10, 15 minutes of comedy of this growing wet spot on this man's pants to the extent that like Dolomite's arms get tired. He shakes him out and then picks the guy back up again. Well, to the point where the very next scene is that same guy sitting around telling Leroy and Skillet about what, you know, about Petey still being alive and and all of them holding their noses because his dick shit smelled so bad. <laughs> his piss fart, whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Always got to let a guy change his pants before he tells you the story of the guy who's come back to life to avenge himself on you. I feel like when you walk in all shit covered, everybody's just like, why don't you do this, something about that first? I don't care <laughs> about the urgency of anything else. This that- really, I'll tell you, this is the emergency. <laughs> this right here. <laughs> But yeah, after 27 minutes of, boy, did he just shit himself, we cut back to Petey. Now, he's about to fuck Nell again, right? But damn it, if their fuck isn't interrupted by a phone call again, this time from Satan. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Satan has uh, two things. One, (laughs) you have magic powers. Right, right. Two... Be careful with your magic power. <laughs> well, sorry, he he has a magical cane yep. or access to it, right? He's like, you know what? I know this is weird for me to call you in the middle of Act Two about. I meant to mention this earlier. This is so weird because we could, could just go back and write it in the script. But at, at any rate, I left a magical cane for you that's going to give you superpowers should you ever be attacked by a bunch of guys. Yeah, dear listener, this is not just hilarious comedy from No Illusions. Yes, at this point, 37 minutes into this movie, it becomes Petey Wheatstraw and the search for the magic pimp cane. Yes, yeah. it does. Yes, it does. And as a prover, okay, so the devil has to explain that over the phone and says, like, you know, it it is entirely possible that Leroy and Skillet are going to send five goons to your apartment right now, to your girlfriend's apartment right now to beat you up. And then... That happens, and Petey Wheatstraw kicks the shit out of them without needing magic powers whatsoever. It's, <laughs> it's, it is the, the most, like, this movie, was this movie shot sequentially, right? I, I <laughs> did not understand. You can move scenes around. It, it was yeah, crazy. Yeah, Boyhood borrowed a lot from this film. Yeah, it was, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, right. The, the, the devil calls him and says, hey, if you find yourself outnumbered at any point, be sure to use my magic cane and it's you know, omnipotence. He's like, yeah, sure, we'll do. And then five guys attack him. No magic cane, no omnipotence. It's the weirdest goddamn thing that you can imagine. Also, he's in his tidy greenies the whole time. That was distracting. <laughs> I have to talk about one moment during this fight scene. Cause again, nobody learned any karate for this no, movie. No. <laughs> but at one point he was very clearly supposed to throw one of these extras out the window, but he misses <laughs> and throws him near the window, yeah. <laughs> relatively close to the window in comparison to other things in the room. <laughs> and the extra just is like, ah. <laughs> he, does a, he does a little like, I'm falling to the floor moment. <laughs> See, I was going to point out that Petey Wheatstraw, before performing every single Kung Fu move oh. in, this, in this scene, uh-huh. does that thing you do when you're nine and go, Whoa! Yes, it's it's I love it. Oh, it's so I, I'm confused by when you're nine, because I still do that all the time <laughs> whenever I do anything vaguely karate like. So when, when I get into a fight, that's what I usually do. <laughs> so it's OK. Eli. So, yeah, so he finishes kicking some ass and Satan calls him back and he's like, what part of magic fucking cane <laughs> did you not understand? <laughs> uh, hey, it's the devil. Noticed you didn't use your cane during your fight. Just do you not like it. I can return the cane if you don't <laughs> like can it. We can get I you just... a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they make one with a sword. I just didn't think you would need a sword. So. But yeah, so now, so he calls his buddies like, hey, you got to meet me at the creepy graveyard where the Satan left this magic cane for me. Mm-hmm. Now, that's never established by Satan, right? Like, Satan no. doesn't say, go down to the old... Okay, good. I just wanted to nope. make sure I didn't stroke out there for a minute. <laughs> if he did, neither me or the guy doing the closed captioning caught it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, oh, speaking of the poor guy doing the closed captioning. Okay, so oh. we cut to this graveyard. And there's this guy. So, you know, 90% of this movie is just, like, a stand-up comedian, like, forcing one of his good stand-up bits into the plot somewhere, right? So we get the worst example of that, which is this guy doing his 
drunken Bill Cosby noises. <laughs> this is a character that we've never met and we will never see again who just has to open this scene by wandering through and being the hilarious drunk homeless guy. And look, I'm going to try and put this delicately. The people in this movie are not super easy to understand <laughs> as it is. So the gentleman doing a drunk character had no hope of me understanding any of the words that he says in the script. Oh, yeah, no, the fucking, the closed captioning guy just started apologizing to his ex-girlfriends <laughs> and stuff like that. And it was just, it was a weird moment. Commenting yeah. on the scenery. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, but so he, this guy, he taught, he jokes drunkenly for a while and then he falls into a grave so that like, you know, when, when Petey and his buddy come by later, there can be somebody trying to get out of a grave. Get it? I hope so, because they really don't pull the trigger on that joke very well. So if you didn't see it coming, you won't have seen it going either. Our protagonist stands above a drunken homeless person who has fallen into a shallow grave and says, oh, well, maybe I'll kick some dirt on you. Like, I, yeah. it's it's bonkers. Yeah. Of the many things that this movie thinks is funny that is baffling to me. The mistreatment of the homeless population <laughs> is key to this movie's comedy. And by mistreatment, we mean burying a lot. Murder. Yeah. Murder, drugging. Yeah, murder, murder. Yes. And not just like, not. I mean, like, of all the ways to murder someone, one of the meaner <laughs> ones, you know? Well, well, the movie will top that in 20 minutes, but I don't yeah, want to give that away. Exactly. Yes. Well. Yes, it will. So yeah, so they come across this this drunk guy passed out in a grave, and and Petey's like, "Hey, let's put some dirt on him." And his and his buddy's like, "Dude, are you are you fucking serious right now?" He's like, "No, I was I was I was, I mean, I if you joking. were serious, then I, mean, I was you're yeah. <laughs> no, okay, all right, well, no, then I was kidding." So they find the magic devil cane, and they and they wander off. And by the way, magic devil cane very much a stick and a small amount of duct tape. Yeah, not, not an they impressive didn't even problem. use all that much duct tape. Mm -mm. All right, so, okay, meanwhile, Leroy and Skillet are hard at work getting ready for the big show. Mr. White shows up, and he's not so sure. He's heard about this, this Petey Weedstraw fella, and he's, he's not sure his investment was well made in the first place. Yeah, and Leroy's like, oh, don't worry, we murdered him. Nope, uh, I mean, we murdered his show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, didn't save it all that well. <laughs> and then... Totally bafflingly, Mr. White is like, I would like five tickets to the front row of this black sexy comedy show that you have planned for this evening. <laughs> yeah. and, and the line is, my wife loves these kind of shows. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and I, and I, there's only one way to interpret that, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my note underneath that is, my wife loves black sexy comedy yeah. shows. Yeah. B yes. B C B C. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so so Petey and his pals are at the club chilling. Oh God, Jesus! We haven't mentioned any of the costuming up to this point. I just want to say, <laughs> Petey Weistra's outfit here is all that needs to exist in the world, really. Oh yes, it is. So okay, so we get this painful to watch scene. Okay, oh. the idea here, the through line of the comedy is that this woman shows up to audition to be a singer in their show, and she can't sing at all. Because bad singing is really fun to listen to for nine and a half minutes. Okay, but she isn't singing so much as she's a cell phone that nobody turns off in the <laughs> loop yes. yeah. of the scene. Look, again, we all know how this comedy beat is supposed to work. Here's how it's not supposed to work. Have your tuneless singer sing the same single sentence over and over again yep. at the maximum volume while you cannot hear the dialogue over the scene, yep. which is Petey using the pimp cane like a compass to track down the bomb that Earth, Wind, and Fire have hidden in the bathroom. At, at, yeah. And well, and, 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 and let me say again, we will never express to you how long it takes Dolomite to realize that that's what the cane is doing. Like, <laughs> we spend three or four fucking minutes on this. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen a baby that makes itself laugh for no reason? <laughs> right. Like, it's just all of a sudden the crinkly paper is the funniest thing in the world. That same thinking is behind the comedy of the <laughs> bomb detective cane. <laughs> this movie. 
So yeah, so they find this bum, and we have like bomb hot potato for a little while. Singing lady still doesn't shut up. They're throwing a bomb around, and she's still just doing her little atonal sentence. And by oh god, I have to <laughs> yeah, point this out. Bomb. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's four road flares or red candles covered in construction paper. And I shit you not, they have drawn a clock and taped it to the front. It made me so sad. I don't think any prop has ever made me sadder in all my days. This movie did not have real clock to go on the bomb, money. No. <laughs> no. Oh. So yeah, so they throw that around for a little while. Eventually, Petey takes it outside and he tosses it into the middle of a bunch of watermelons. Mm-hmm. So that we can get a watermelon explosion. And a young Gallagher walked out of the theater that day <laughs> with a dream in his heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we cut over to the opening night of Leroy and Skillet's comedy show. Oh, and this is where the music goes off. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. A girl is playing the piano and a trombone at the same time. <laughs> this, th this is, in fact, the Dolomite Band. And they are to music what the previous scene was to singing. Oh, if you have ever you. seen a Dolomite movie, this band is in it and they can only do this quote line. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they just are playing the same stanza over and over again <laughs> as though that's all the fucking rights they could afford. Yep. See, I, I wrote in my notes, see what I like about funk is you only need to write nine notes and then you just play them until the 70s are over. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That is not fair to how great the Petey Wheatstraw theme song is. Like, I'm oh, yeah, yeah. No, like all the other music in this, there was great music through most of this movie. But yeah, this was rough. And we get like nine minutes of this as people show up for the comedy show. Petey Wheatstraw shows up, but don't worry, he's in disguise, by which I mean... <laughs> Talking in a silly voice and wearing a small hat, not a normal size hat at all. <laughs> to be fair, his hat is distractingly tiny. And very small. <laughs> Fucking Clark Kent would look over at him and say, put some effort into it, man. Come on. <laughs> and and when you say glasses. silly voice, this is a Jamaican accent that would make Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> truly, <laughs> truly. Miss Cleo would be like, yeah, Clark Kent's right. Put some work into it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tone it down now, man. <laughs> All right, so the music wraps up and an MC comes out to introduce Leroy and Skillet and we get like 45 seconds of them doing comedy, which is the high point of the show to me, right? Yeah, but again, they weren't allowed to do like their full act. No, no, somebody. they get one joke. Mm -hmm. I, I, th I thought the math joke was pretty funny. I don't, pretty I'm funny. not going to spoil it here. So, you know, cause <laughs> you're going to watch the movie. You deserve the pay. This is, this is the climax of the movie. If you were dying. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Someone else's pants. I also love this moment where they have to like introduce the guys who paid for the show. And he's like, and, and the actual line is, all right, everybody in the audience, let's hear it for the whites. That's <laughs> <laughs> for their investors. I love that. All right. So, but now Petey is in the audience. He's going to use his magic devil cane to make Leroy and Skillet say mean things about Mr. White's wife. Yeah. So let's be clear here, right? We've already seen how the Karate Kid ripped off this movie. And here we'll see in 1977, Rudy Ray Moore invented Liar Liar. And Jim Carrey just came by and stole it 20 years ago. Oh, later. you're right. Yeah. And Bruce Almighty, too. Bruce We're Almighty. Yeah. 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 And Gallagher. Yeah. <laughs> However, I will say what those movies had is um, a second half to this joke because <laughs> he uses the cane. And instead of them saying something funny, they're just like, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but so they, they quick introduce the next act before they slap somebody with her dick or something. And then the lady comes out and, and uh, to sing and he uses his cane to make her dress and her hair fly off and make her sing bad. I have a question about this singer. They introduce <laughs> her. Her name is Cammie Smalls. She is, when she walks out on stage, either two feet tall, or the band is 84 feet tall. <laughs> One of those things must be true. <laughs> also, she just comes out like mid court. Yeah. Noah, Andrew, did songs not have beginnings until 1989? Yeah, we did didn't just come, come up with that until so fairly relatively recently. It's okay, like skateboard. good to You'd know. think it was older. You'd think we'd have come up with that earlier, but yeah. Yeah, but so she comes out and then they, he, he canes her so she can't do her song, and then he, then he uses the devil cane to like Make a 
snowstorm lightning thing happen inside the the club. I'm just saying all the other shit was superfluous, right? If you were going there, you <laughs> might as well started there. Yeah, it is weird that he took a time to prank a singer who has yet not been related to the plot of the movie <laughs> when he was just going to <laughs> blow up the building. And listener, if you're thinking to yourself, that doesn't sound super funny. What if I told you that it was intercut with footage of a man being beaten to death? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it is right because uh, Larry's big brother gets a uh, Scarface Willie at this point and yes beats him to death with his bare hands <laughs> we watched that for so long it's so long it's so <laughs> long and so brutal and so not comedy <laughs> nothing that's happening in this 75 minute scene is comedy no, so like they, we even start interspersing these cuts of what I said it was giggly black Santa Claus with bloody tears, but it's actually <laughs> I guess it's the Satan character later on they're going to give him this big bushy white beard for no discernible reason. Uh, I had him as white face Moses. So the, okay, thank yeah, you for yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, and then we see Mr. White and his henchies carrying Leroy and Skillet away, right? Because Petey has gotten his revenge. And mm -hmm. sure seems like the movie's over now. <laughs> sure. I, all of my notes for the rest of this movie are, there are blank minutes in the movie. How could there be anything left in the movie? <laughs> well, so here's how. Sa we cut to Satan and he says, well, that was some pretty good cane storm summoning there. An ugly Satan daughter who's wearing a veil at this point. So we still haven't seen how ugly she is. She's like, she's pretty impressed. She's like, all right. Yeah, no, I could, I can see, I can see that. I can see me and him together. As a matter of fact, she says, and I quote, my joy is infinite like the sea. Yeah. Buck, do you think infinite means? <laughs> <laughs> and one little touch as this scene ends, we watch Petey's friend whose younger brother was murdered. Ted. Trying to finish off the Scarface Willie. But before he can, Scarface Willie kills himself. Oh, well, I didn't even catch that. With a knife. He stabs himself with a knife. And the movie pauses to be like, is that a comedy beat? <laughs> he kills himself so that you can't kill him. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm pretty sure that this movie needs a minute to decide what to do with the last 40 minutes of itself. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. What's the plot from here? What's the plot been up to this point? You guys want to talk about football or something? Find out the answers to these questions and more. We'll return for the tangential conclusion of Petey Wheatstraw. Daddy, Daddy. Yes, daughter of Satan. Daddy, did you find me a man to marry? I sure did, honey. You will marry a famous comedian. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. Oh, I, I'm going to marry Jerry Seinfeld? Uh, no. Uh, no, he's, uh, it's, he's black. Uh, uh, Richard Pryor? He's a genius. No, no. Couldn't get oh, that. Oh, Eddie Murphy. Uh, also, no. All right, Dad. Well, that that's... 455 guesses. I'm, I, who is it? Uh, it's, um, it's Dolomite. You never guessed. Is it, is it too late for Jerry Seinfeld? Way too late, yeah. I, I, I still don't understand why I had to wear a wig and makeup for the sketch. Call acting, Andrew. Read a book. <sighs> <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on this weird montage of Petey Wheatstraw going all superhero with his magic cane. But but it starts with this like very long setup with characters that we've never met arguing. Right? I am baffled by this. All I can assume, this is literally all I can assume, is that Dolomite was like, I have at least 11 minutes more of comedy bits that I could do with this magic cane. And they were like, well, you should probably do them before the conclusion of the movie's plot. And he was like, no, we will put this movie in the order we shot it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's, the first scene culminates in a woman catching her husband, cheating on her and trying to kill him. But but Petey Wheatstraw comes through and freezes time and says, why kill him when I can turn him into a pup puppy? He has 
turning people into puppy powers. I just want you to put a pin in that. <laughs> <laughs> it would have come in handy a lot more in it this might, film if he'd yeah. remembered it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. And then we do a whole montage of him walking around, like granting wishes and doing super shit with his cane. Right. Yep. He makes a, a fat woman thin and makes a broke guy rich. <laughs> there's also a great moment where uh, there's a kid chasing a ball into a, into traffic and he uses his cane to make the car stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. well. well, yeah, that's the thing. It's not like they had CGI or anything back then. So the car just keeps coming, but slower. It's just like they, the guy just hit the brakes is all. <laughs> It was awesome. And look, this is the, right, this is the Bruce Almighty infinite powers, you know, I've got the magic cane <laughs> montage. Mm -hmm. And almost everything that Petey Wheatstraw does here is like, it's not nice, right? Like the one genuinely generous thing that you think he does is save the child from being hit by that car, right? And then he promptly takes the child over to the side of the road and, and I swear to you, I'm not making this up, pulls out a pick and says, I'm going to comb out your nappy hair until the child and jams it into the kid's hair and starts yanking on it until the child actor on the screen cries for real. Very <laughs> obviously movie. for real. And, yeah. and we linger there for a oh, while yeah. and watch that yeah. kid cry. <laughs> this is comedy to someone. <laughs> And let's point out, by the way, that he also runs out into the road when he's using his magic cane to stop the car. So, like, you don't need a magic cane to do that. You run out into the road and people will hit the brakes anyway. So, <laughs> so, and then he, like, he sees some people getting out of a crappy car. And I love this moment because, like, there's a family getting out of this crappy car that's broken down and he waves the cane and it turns into a really nice car that's running. So they get back into it. I just, I love the the thought process in that man's head. He's like, oh, all right. Well, my car is nice now. Get back in, kids. <laughs> I am really, really glad that, that you had these notes because despite the fact that, that we are the same age, due to the passage of time and the fact that automobiles have become slightly nicer in the past four right, decades. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the crappy old car and the... Quote, nice new car are basically the same car. Oh, it's a 1978 <laughs> old 88 or something. Like, like it's a yeah. it's a hoopty. Yeah, exactly. It's a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Poop jokes and cars. They've come a long way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, at this point in the movie, my wife just turned to me. She was watching this and she goes, this is the weirdest music video ever. <laughs> yeah, I give her that. All right, but eventually, though, he gets back to the bar and he learns that Satan came looking for him while he was gone. <laughs> and he says, okay, I need to go rehearse my comedy show before that starts. And she's like, really? Satan came by to see, and you're going <laughs> to rehearse your comedy? Okay. All right. Priorities are your own, I guess. <laughs> uh, and spoiler alert, we do not get to hear Petey Wheatstraw rehearsing his comedy bits, which I was really looking forward to, like, you're a fatty, fat, super fat <laughs> or, you know, more of, more of that classic comedy. You poem. have yeah. a fat ass. You have a fat ass. <laughs> a fat ass. <laughs> I've almost got it. Oh. Almost got it. <laughs> Rule of threes. Rule of threes. What rhymes with? <laughs> so, yeah. So, so Satan shows up, though. He's, he shows up in the dressing room and he's like, hey, man, I know I gave you a magic cane that can do all things. But hey, if you see a little boy about to get squished by a car that looks like a filthy sinner, like, let me have that one, okay? Yeah, I don't know what you're Come on. I had doing. plans. I feel like you passed rather lightly over Satan hiding in the dressing room, by yeah. which we mean, like, standing behind the rack of clothes oh, in Petey Wheatstraw's dressing room. It's a, I was hanging out in your coat rack, <laughs> and I will admit it seemed scarier in my head. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> masturbating on anything back there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he also asked Petey, he's like, I think I need to take my cane back. And Petey's like, no. And he's like, oh, okay, oh. but don't use it against me. All right. <laughs> so pinky swear. And Petey stays <laughs> suspiciously quiet. He there. does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's like, all right, well, I'll be back tomorrow so you can marry my daughter. And he's like, oh, okay. Cool. Cool. So he leaves. Petey goes downstairs. He tells Nell that, hey, that was Satan that just left, to which she says, I knew it. 
What? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I love this movie so goddamn much. All right, so now Petey and his buddy, they need to hatch a plan to keep him from having to marry Satan's daughter. This is where Bugs Bunny meets a Hindu myth, okay? Oh, <laughs> fantastic. This plan is amazing. So he calls Satan and he's like, hey, man, I'm going to have to meditate through my entire wedding. It's a family tradition. <laughs> so, and then he tells his buddy, you need to make a convincing Petey Wheat straw mask and we can put it on a homeless guy. And trick him into fucking Satan's daughter. I have never been high enough to write this scene. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, write this down. We're going to put it in the movie. This is where we introduce yeah. that your character is capable of making perfect flesh masks of everyone he knows. Yeah, I love Mission Impossible. It, yes, right. Uh, it, there are only two things about this plan that confuse me, right? So, one, did Petey Wheatstraw forget that he has omnipotent powers over time, space, and matter now that yeah. he has the cane? Like, yes, you did. don't need your buddy to be a secret expert in face making. Like, you could just turn, instead of turning the guy into a puppy, you could turn the guy into an exact duplicate of Petey Wheatstraw, right? <laughs> and two, if there's a plate, the whole point of this is to buy them time to get out of town. Right. If there's a place you could go where Satan can't find you, why don't you just go there? Why do you have to sacrifice another homeless person, yeah. you weird sociopath? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Also, do you just have a regional Satan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> it's, it's like every episode of the Dukes of Hazard, right? Like they cross over the county line. And yeah. <laughs> Damn them Duke boys. <laughs> yeah, sorry. If we make it into Wisconsin, they have to report directly to Cole. So I don't know how to do that. <laughs> All right. So they go to find themselves a, a sacrificial homeless guy and, and kidnap a drunk. Yep. Okay. I, we cannot clarify enough. This is like someone played Yakety Sacks behind Schindler's List. We yeah. watch a comedy needle being filled up with heroin. This was their first idea. Yeah. This was their <laughs> Yeah, nothing's even gone wrong yet. Look at Petey Wheatstraw has infinite power. He can <laughs> stop people. We've seen him use the cane to freeze people dead in their tracks. You did not have to ambush a hobo. Or you could just turn him into a puppy until you need him. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> so. Oh, and, and one more thing, right? Like, so they kidnap the hobo, shoot him full of heroin, and our protagonist says, hey, can I stuff this guy in the trunk before I give him sacrificially over to Satan? Yes. Yep. Our <laughs> protagonist. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So we cut to them. To Jimmy, uh, his buddy Jimmy now is touching up that Petey Wheat straw mask. <laughs> this, this is so excellent because you can watch them be confused about where Petey is supposed to be <laughs> in this scene. Right. Because it's just him with the guy poking him in the face with a paintbrush or whatever. Right. right? Yeah. But then like, it's obvious that Petey's supposed to be in the scene. They're like, fuck, what do we what do we do? We put a wig on a cat and then put that cat in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, I, I just want to point out, like, this was supposed to have been opening night for the Petey Wheatstraw comedy experience, right? Remember the competition that was going to drive yeah, Leroy Skillet? Yeah, murdered over this. Yes, yeah. there were deaths over this. <laughs> no, not only does that not go on, and this takes several days to pull out, like, we see days and nights go past, yep. but like, Nobody in the movie remembers the act one plot. Like I Nope. It's not like people show up to that club going, was there not no. a comedy show? <laughs> 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 so now, but Jimmy, as he's touching up the mask, he's like, hey, you know, it occurs to me that fooling Satan is probably a bad idea. <laughs> and, and Petey says, don't worry. As long as I have this cane, I'm as powerful as Satan. To which Jimmy doesn't say, so what if you lose the cane? <laughs> or, hey, were there any non-drugged up homeless person plans that we could come up with using this cane? Using no? omnipotence? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then we get all the surefire comedic gold of an older gentleman jogging for several minutes. Okay. Was that comedy? Because I was just like, it's cool. Satan's staying healthy. Good for yep. him. Yeah. So Satan is out for a jog and he's wearing a red track suit because he's Satan. 
I think that's the joke. Oh. I love this tracksuit. I would wear this tracksuit every day for the rest of my life if I owned this tracksuit. <laughs> Andrew, you are very soon going to own this tracksuit. Yes, yeah, to say that's all. You're, you're going to get seven of these for Christmas, by the way. So yeah. you get one for every day of the week. All right. So Satan jogs into the club and tells Petey, "Hey, I've got a, a wedding gift for you. Something I wanted to give you before you married my daughter." Yes. So they they jog off together. Yes. <laughs> He takes him to the abandoned funeral home red velvet fuck den with an orgy. Very weird <laughs> location for a fuck orgy. Yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, and I wish we could have set this up and said, if you pause the movie at this point and said, I want you to fill a notebook of all the guesses in <laughs> all the universe of what <laughs> Satan's <laughs> gift to his son-in-law would be. Would you come up with orgy montage? Because I would not have come up with orgy montage. Be like the first, second thing on my list, Andrew. <laughs> Based on this movie so far. Right. So we, have, so we have a big, long, comedic orgy montage. Uh, Andrew, what, what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eli, there, there's something like you just need to understand about until like the mid-90s. All of our porn in every, it didn't matter how, how, what scenario it came up with, what was just the obligatory 90 seconds in an R rated movie where you got to see 1970s boobs jiggle around on the screen for a okay. little bit. Yes. Good yeah, to know. that's it. Good to much know. Yeah, the, pointier. That's but. porn. This movie posits that a reverse gangbang is mostly eating pussy like a dipping desk bird. <laughs> 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 to, to to be fair, that is more pussy eating than you see in most movies pre nineteen ninety five. That's true. Yeah, yep, no, that's that fair. is true. So yeah, so he he fucks the shit. And once again, okay. So keep in mind, Satan's supposed to be the bad guy here. Yeah, Satan just gave him a giant orgy. But okay, this is not a monkey's paw. I mean, other than the little like you know stuck on horns that that are there. We you know with uh, <laughs> oh god, they're uh, so bad, <laughs> <laughs> so bad. But, you know, it is six reasonably attractive demon ladies that uh, Petey Wheatstraw gets to fucking Siriatum. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So then he comes back. Now, he's this is such a weird fucking scene. So he comes back from his orgy. He's running late. It's almost time for Satan to pick him up for the wedding. Except why does he need to be there? They have the fake him that they're going to give to Satan. It's all so confusing. He walks in and they're like, where the heck were you? And he's like, oh, I was, we needed to put boobs in the movie. So I was yeah. doing a, was doing Orgy. the boobs scene. Montage. Yeah. So he shows up just before Satan gets there. He has to run and hide while the demon horn guys come to pick Petey up. And they're like, here, have this unconscious person that's definitely Petey Wheatstraw. <laughs> yeah. But wouldn't you know it, Homeless guy wakes up from the heroin overdose they gave him and he takes his mask off. Uh-oh, the demons have realized they were duped. And again, the movie keeps pausing like a toddler telling you a joke, right? It is yeah. sure you're going to be like, ah, a guy woke up from the heroin overdose. This movie is hilarious. <laughs> All right, so Satan's daughter is left standing at the altar. She is pissed. The devil is pissed. So he earthquakes the fuck out of Petey Wheatstraw. <laughs> yeah, and I, I applaud this movie's decision to use the Starship Enterprise as flying through an asteroid field way of simulating an earthquake. Right? <laughs> right. Shake the camera a tiny bit to the left and have you yeah. wave your arms. Oh, right, yeah, so. exactly. Knock two things over. Yeah, but Petey Wheatstraw, of course, grabs his cane and unearthquakes the earthquake, right? Like you do. And then the devil's like, shit, ah, I probably shouldn't have given him an item that's as powerful as I am, right? Like a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, the, the, the yeah, devil that's... was like, oh, fuck, right, omnipotence cane. He actually, actually have a scene where he's like, oh, right, I forgot I gave him that cane. It's like, do, do you often give out your omnipotence cane and forget <laughs> about it? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. See why you lost that fucking fiddle. So, okay. So, Petey and the gang are talking this over the next day at the club. Nell is very upset. She's she's like, by the way, I don't appreciate you getting my fucking apartment Satan earthquaked the other day. Broke a bunch <laughs> of my shit. And this is where 
Um, the demon Halloween costumes show up for another <laughs> fight scene. And, and I have to admit, up until this moment, I did not think this movie could go lower rent, but they sure do with these I, costumes. I, I So you guys are the experts in this. Why do the demons have little triangles sewn into their <laughs> unitards? Like, and they're color coded. Is this like a hierarchy thing? Is this some part of the Bible I haven't read? I love that you think we would know. <laughs> I've never been prouder. <laughs> so, and the extras are furious that they had to wear these silly costumes, right? They are very clearly the same five guys from the apartment fight earlier, and they're like, this is fucking stupid, man. I look like a Halloween costume right now. Well, and what's really amazing to me, so the best acting we see the enti- in the entire film, when they bust into the club, all of Petey's friends have to be scared because these are a bunch of demons, but it's just like, you know, it's just like a bunch of eight-year-olds were putting on some kind of hell thing at their church or whatever, right? Yeah. But all of the people have to act scared anyway. Then we have this amazing fight scene where we keep hearing the sound of glass breaking, (laughs) but nothing is breaking because they don't have the budget to break shit. No, they do not. (laughs) But then ultimately, Petey Kane waves them all away, right? He waves this cane around and they're like, right, omnipotence cane. Fuck. This is not going to help. Yeah. And in response, Satan is going to send out his his good demons, which I think is is weird that he sent his second stringer demons first, right? It seems weird yeah. to hold back the best demons. But. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So, but Petey explains to all the guys that he's like, hey, we need to get out of town very, very soon, but not right now. Satan's regional. He's like Fago. We, we get, you know, three miles away. It'll be like a Dukes of Hazard <laughs> ending. But yeah, but the devil's like, all right, we're going to send the real fucking minions this time. Petey and his gang are all arguing over who gets to use which suitcase. The devil minions show up. We have the exact same scene again. It's the, yeah. it's the same guys, except they put like burn makeup on their faces. They're like, okay, <laughs> they upgraded them to, to Bernie faced Halloween costumes. And, and some of the triangles are red this time. <laughs> oh, okay. They did. They leveled up. Okay. Yeah. All right. This makes sense now. Yeah. Ah, uh, at th- this fight choreography, I, Petey has the omnipotence cane, but mostly what he does with it is uses it like a staff, right? <laughs> right. To just kind of poke at them. And even when he uses the powers, right, he uses it to like temporarily stop the demons a little bit. I'm like, make them back cast- out of the door slowly. Yeah. yeah. Cast turn into puppies. Right. right? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh. It's a cantrip. Just use it. <laughs> yeah. No, but again, the exact same fucking scene. Bunch of demons come in. They have unchoreographed fighting. And then he uses the cane to make them all back away so that they can run off. And then they go outside and do the same goddamn fight scene <laughs> the again. Same <laughs> thing again. <laughs> but luckily, in this scene, at least, as he's distracted strangling one of the demons with his cane, they (laughs) kidnap his lady and drag her up to the roof. Yeah, exactly. At least it ends a little different this time. Yeah, so Satan's like, hey, I'm gonna kill Nell if you don't come up here and marry my goddamn daughter already. And also, I would like my cane back. (laughs) (laughs) By by the way, did anyone else notice that uh, in in fight number three, which is in the alley, there's a Lil Wayne graffiti on the wall? Yes, I did notice that. I I tried to Google to figure out if there was a connection, but uh, I I came up empty. So I'm sure that's where he came up. Just to be clear for the listeners keeping track at home, Bruce Almighty, Little Wayne, Liar Liar, and Karate Kid, and Gallagher, all inspired by Petey Weinstra. It's really the most important film ever made, if you think about it. We owe it so much. So so Petey climbs up to the roof to have it out with Satan. Satan, by the way, is in white face at this point, and I'm so happy with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. The act, the idea that a black actor really wanted to go evil. So he put on white face. I get it. That's fair. <laughs> and when he gets onto the roof, I know this isn't relevant to the plot of the movie, but I watched it so many times out of absolute confusion. He steps onto the roof and then he does a sassy little dance <laughs> yes, when he first does. sees the devil. It's ba- <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Why not, movie? Eli? Why would you not do a sassy little dance? Right yeah, it's fair. I also love that. Like he's like he's like. All right, I'll go marry your daughter. Can Nell go? And Satan's like, yes, uh, she can. 
she can it's just the <laughs> leave now. You let the lady go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you don't you don't want to wait to release your hostage? <laughs> no. Nope. No. I cannot because- think of a single reason why having a hostage <laughs> would be useful. Here. So <laughs> so then we have the same demon fight for a fourth fucking time. <laughs> <sighs> On an unlit roof. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, okay, and it's this time it's just Dolomite instead of him and all his buddies because we cut the downstairs where his buddies are. Nell runs out and says, hey, you know, Petey's fighting the demons up there. He needs help. And all his buddies are like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stay right the fuck down here. And they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, no, they, we, we cut back upstairs thinking that maybe they're going to show up at the last. Nope, they take Nell Back to her place to get her phone charger or something. <laughs> yeah. Women, am I right? <laughs> Jesus. So meanwhile, Satan is duking it out with Petey. Petey's getting the best of him, though. He's got the cane, so he's kicking a lot of ass. Mm-hmm. And again, Satan is the protagonist of the movie. He's like, Petey, we were friends. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, dude, like earlier today, I produced like six or seven hot demon ladies for you to have an orgy with. Like, I'm just asking that you impregnate my daughter. Clearly, I'm cool with you fucking other women on the side. <laughs> right? And, but Petey's answer is, you can't trust the devil, the only person who has told the truth and <laughs> not tried to kidnap a hobo multiple times <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> <So. sighs> Yeah, but so Petey kicks Satan's ass with the cane. We watch Satan scream at the cane for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then the transition to the fire thing. Oh, oh God, God, yes. <laughs> it's a literal star wipe. Yep. Oh, it was so it was good. it was the fucking Dolomite's purple paisley outfit of special effects. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. It was the best thing we've seen since the Quran melted Salman Rushdie's face. Yep. Oh. It was yeah. so amazing. Yeah, he said like, Satan catches on fire and he throws him off the roof and then he snaps the omnipotence cane and he's going to regret that shit. Too much. Yeah, yeah right. Not sure why he didn't keep the omnipotence cane. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't forget, while Satan is dying, we smash cut over to what is a silhouette of Gumby lit on fire on the, <laughs> yeah. uh, on the pavement. It's, it's phenomenal. So good. <laughs> All right. So... PD has downstairs. He's pretty stoked about all the Satan killing. He's it's pretty good. You know, I just killed Satan. He's feeling pretty good about himself. So he gets in the car, but damn it, if Satan's not in that car, he's still alive. What the hell was any of this about then? Yeah, it's reverse Wizard of Oz. We get to see like <laughs> Satan is there and Leroy and Skillet are there. Oh, like, yeah, right. You were there. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So he gets in the car and it's like, nope, sorry, I'm still Satan because you can't kill me. And he's like, right, Satan shouldn't have snapped the omnipotence cane. Um, (laughs) Ugly Satan daughter is there. And that's how we like the close of the film is that like she pulls back her veil and we're like, oh, yeah, you know, she's pretty ugly. Yeah. All Voldemort it up and shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's Nell with one tooth and a like kind of caved in nosy thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh And then Petey screams and the end. (laughs) That's the end. He might as well scream, we are out of ideas for this movie. (laughs) All right. So, Andrew, I I have a a question for you, because last week you seemed really disappointed that you weren't going to be a part of that this this episode. And I I get that you regret that now. But like, (laughs) do you have any idea going back in your mind, your college days, why you thought you might not? Yeah, I blame my friend Travis, who had a huge fondness for black exploitation films. And one night we got very, very drunk and watched like the complete oeuvre of uh, Dolomite. And this was one of them. Excellent. And I seem to remember like you, alcohol. So yeah, I know you're not a, uh, neither of you are connoisseurs the way I am, but um, see the thing that, that can happen when you're really, really drunk is you can fall asleep for like half an hour and wake up. <laughs> and, like, you, you've missed 27 minutes of lingering on a cane vibrating. Right. So, yeah. That's the thing is that, yeah, there's no 27 minute period where it would matter to the plot of this movie or anything exactly. where you would have noticed anything <laughs> missing. All right. All right. All right. Well played. Okay. So that's going to do it for our review of PD Wheat Straw, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to rope you back in for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, our listeners may remember the anti science extravaganza from a ways back climate hustle. Well, 
the good news is this week the sequel is out. No. And the better news is it's narrated by Kevin Sorbo. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, man, I can't believe. No, don't. No. <laughs> Shut up, Andrew. Shut the fuck up. All right. All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring the last episode we record before Joe Biden is president-elect to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Hell abolished the rule of male primogeniture in 1984 and became a community property jurisdiction. So, turns out Satan didn't need a son after all. <laughs> Joe Biden went on to win Florida and we all went to bed happy. Uh, knock on wood. Knock on wood. Rabbit's foot. Rabbit's foot. Knock on wood. Mr. White's actual name was Steve Jones. He just felt super uncomfortable correcting the people in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> the Whites, everybody. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.